everyone. This is Adriana, and I am in the process of writing a detailed book guide over the symbolisms and meanings of animal spirits, more often called spirit animals. If you might have seen, I have posted a quick guidebook to the meanings of these animals on our website, which you can download for free at the link provided in our description of this video. But um, I also want to make videos over all of the different animals. And before doing that, I thought that it was important to clarify what the different meanings of the words that are thrown around are, which are spirit animals, power animals and totems. For the book and for these in general, I am referring to the animals as animal spirits because we have given different interpretations and overlap with the use of spirit animal. It's even become somewhat of a meme, you know, people saying, oh, that animal is my spirit animal because I'm lazy or however people say it. So to separate from the actual meaning of how we should be using the word spirit animal. I'm referring to them as a whole as animal spirits, because the easiest way it seems to describe the difference between these terms is by how they relate to you. And so as a whole, they are animal spirits. So what's interesting is that we have used the terms so much and have just boiled it down to spirit animals so much that at least two of the sources I have found um, describing the differences, even they were not entirely clear on the specific definitions of the terms, um, even though they have been studying this for years, but the easiest way that you can describe the terms and use them for your own practices is, like I said, how they relate to you. So in this sense, a totem is the animal spirit that you make a contract with at or before your birth. You fuse your energies with the energies of this animal spirit, which means that you take on specific traits from them. And it is part of your life journey to embrace um, other traits from them. Typically, you will feel a calling toward this animal like your entire life. So if you have an animal that you have always just really liked or wanted to collect figurines of artwork, that is probably your totem animal. For me, that is the wolf. And to commemorate that, I'm actually wearing my wolf shirt. So you can do that. But if you don't have this great calling from this animal where you can just pinpoint what it is. You can figure out what your totem is by doing meditations to call them forth. And um, I don't know if this is typically the way that you're supposed to do it, but you could also just read through all the traits and see which one resonates the most with you. And then you can assume that that animal probably is your totem. It isn't entirely necessary. I don't think to know what animal is your totem because you already embrace those traits and it's your life journey to learn the traits that you don't know. So you're still going to um, address those anyways. But the reason that could be helpful is that by knowing which one it is, you can go through and figure out which traits you aren't embodying and figure out which ones it is that you need to work on. But what is more useful to know is the spirit animals, which come to you and power animals, which you call forth yourself, or your totem might call for you. So if you know that there's traits that you want to work on, or traits that you are having difficulty learn from your totem, you can call on a power animal in order to take on those traits. But the spirit animals will come forth in order to teach you to take on the traits that you are not taking on and to guide you through making decisions 
in obstacles that you are running into. Basically, the power animal is what you call forth in order to take on the specific traits and energies that you are seeking while the spirit animal is trying to lead you to taking on those traits and energies and go in the right directions. So to work with power animals, you can study the different traits and meanings for the animals to figure out which ones you want to call forth and for what purpose you want to call them forth. And then the reason that you would want to study the spirit animals is because you will have energies come in through meditations, your dreams, through um, it just running across them often in you know books that you read or when flipping through magazines, or when watching a movie. And if you're seeing this animal multiple times, then it's probably trying to give you a message. And so you can review the information to figure out what are they trying to tell me. And um, often this will continue to repeat until you figure out what the message is that they are trying to tell you. Now within spirit animals, you can have your life animal, which I only actually found this listed specifically on one source, which just described it as an animal that stays with you for your entire life in order to guide you through challenges and learn specific lessons. So I don't know if that could be a spirit animal that comes in and chooses to stay with you for your entire life, or if they are actually referring to a totem and calling it your life animal, or if this could also be a power animal that you call forth and stays with you for your entire life. Like I said, these terms are not entirely clear. So I assume that you could refer to any of these forms as a life animal, as long as they are with you for your entire life. You can also have a crossroads animal, which is a spirit animal that comes in when you're at a crossroads in your life. And this often will lead you towards a entirely new path on your life's journey. They are there in order to help guide you towards taking the correct path that you should move forward in your life. On the other hand, you can have a journey animal, which is pretty much the same thing, except instead of just leading you to the right direction, they will actually lead you down that path and help you adjust to the changes that will come into your life by going towards this new life path. You can also have a medicine animal, which comes in in order to provide healing and support when you are having physical, emotional, mental, spiritual issues come up. Again, this was listed under spirit animals, but said that you can call these forth yourself. So it can be a power animal as well. They can come in in order to let you know that you have the ability to heal and you can also call upon them in order to give you the assurance that you are able to heal. And then you can also have a shadow animal, which will come in when you have repeatedly avoided learning a specific lesson. So these ones are particularly persistent in how they come to you. So you might have a reoccurring dream that won't stop. And that's because they are trying to get you to learn the lesson that they are trying to tell you. So you might have a pattern in your life of dealing with the same issues, um, the same sorts of people. And the only way to get out of that pattern is to figure out what it is that you need to learn from that, how it is that you need to behave. And this particular spirit animal will come in in order to give you that message or tell you that you need to take on a specific trait from them in order to move out of this pattern. They are called the shadow animal because they appear out of the shadows when you are lost in the darkness and to show you the light during your darkest hour. So that is pretty much the best way to describe the distinctions and different types of spirit animals. If there's any Thing about this that you still find confusing, um, let me know in the comments and let me know which animals you would like me to cover first. I am going to be posting the wolf information first because that is my totem, like I said. And right now I am working on the alligator, but if you would like me to release 
uh, the video on a different one first. Let me know when I will do that, or I will make sure to cover that one next. And make sure to subscribe for more videos and check out our website for more information.